My name is Jamie. I'm an animal care specialist here at the San Antonio Zoo. And today I'm going to be talking about our North American black bears. I'm really excited about talking about these guys because while at the San Antonio Zoo we have a lot of really cool species, the North American black bears are really neat because they are known as like a native bear species. And so you can actually find them in the U.S. So we have two black bears here at the zoo. Uh, we, their names are Kashka and Molly. There's a couple really good ways to be able to tell them apart. Kashka is larger, so she's the one that is walking forward towards the pool. You can see that she's probably about 50 to 75 pounds larger than Molly is. And that's one way if you're looking at both bears, especially from this side or from a distance, you can easily tell these two girls apart. Molly, she's the one that's over by the tire right now. She is the smaller bear. And her face is a little bit more narrow than Kashka's is. So if you're looking at a photo um, of just their face, or you just see one bear in the exhibit, um, that's one way that you can tell them apart. Hopefully she'll be able to, she'll turn her face forward towards us so we can see her narrow snout. And she also has little brown markings above her eyes that kind of look like eyebrows. And that's really a distinctive feature for her. Kashka has a rounder face. She has a very round face, round ears. Uh, like when you think of a bear like in a storybook or like a teddy bear, hers is kind of the face that I think of personally, um, except Kashka is much more bear-like, uh, very <laughs> not quite like a teddy bear at all. Um, but like I said, these guys are North American black bears. The cool thing about black bears though is that they don't have to be black. So both of our bears have the black fur, but when you see a black bear, they could actually be brown, they can be cinnamon colored, they can even be white. There's a lot of different color morphs for the North American black bear. Uh, the North American black bear is really neat. They can be found all over the US. So they can be found as south as Florida. Uh, they can be found in Texas. They even can be found in Northern Mexico. Um, but then you also can find them in the north part of the United States. So like in Montana and Washington state, and you'll find them in Canada too. So they really are a North American bear. Uh, there's quite a bit of them around. There's about 750,000 black bears, they estimate in the US, I believe. So like a pretty proficient bear. Um, there is about 16 different subspecies of black bear. The subspecies are all closely related, so they are considered a black bear, but they vary a little bit in their DNA sequencing, so to be defined as different subspecies. The different subspecies can be found uh, different geographical regions, like there's a Florida black bear, there's a black bear species that's found like in Big Bend National Park down in South Texas, um, and then you'll find them, they differ from the black bear species that you'll see up in the northern part of the U.S. And this is Kashka. She's at the tire right now. She's eating some of her food. Uh, black bears, they spend a lot of time foraging. So we mimic that here at the zoo by spreading their food around the entire exhibit. The exhibit goes really far back. So if you were to stand here and someone was standing in the back of the exhibit, you may not be able to see the person because it's pretty big and we have a lot of these trees and natural coverings that the bears can choose to spend their time. But you can see that Kashka is eating some kale right now. Also on the tire, we have a variety of different produce for them. So bears are omnivores, which means that they eat a lot of plants and plant matter, um, but they will also eat meat um, and different meat products. There we go, Kashka. <laughs> so here at the zoo, the bears get about six pounds of produce a day, and that is a variety of produce. They can get celery, um, sweet potato, cucumbers, strawberries, apples, grapes, different kinds of melons, you name it, these bears will eat it. Uh, they're opportunistic. They're not super picky, although they do have different foods that they prefer over the other. For example, Molly doesn't really like papaya, but Kashka does. And so they, <laughs> they definitely know what different types of food that they like. We also feed them fish here at the zoo. It's one of their favorite foods. So they get different herring or mackerel, so different species of fish. Occasionally we, we, we will feed them salmon. And they also get three um, different types of greens. So they can get some romaine, they can get ca collards, although they don't like collards as much as they like some other stuff. They'll eat just the leaves and, and leave the stalks for us to clean up. Um, but they're eating kale on the tire. There's also some spinach around that they'll eat. But because black bears have such a wide natural range, they can eat a wide variety of Food. It just really depends what's in season, where they're living. Uh, in Texas, we have a longer, warmer season, so there's going to be food available 
uh, for more time of the year. And so they can eat different like berries that they find on shrubs. They can eat root vegetables. They can eat some of the browse or shoots of different trees. Um, they can eat fish. Uh, if they catch any prey, they'll eat that. They can even eat insects. But obviously the food and the growing season is going to change differently if you're in Texas versus Florida versus Rhode Island versus you know, Montana or Utah. So the bears eat whatever they find just around the area. They are very smart and the way that they find their food, uh, not only by just looking and seeing it, but by their sense of smell. So the black bears have uh, their mucal sole membranes are about 100 times larger than humans. And the comparison for that is like, if you walk into somebody's house and you smell apple pie baking, we can tell it's apple pie. We may be able to smell like the cinnamon, we may be able to smell the apples, and that's kind of basically it. But if a black bear was to walk into the same house, not only can they smell the apples, they can smell the cinnamon, but they can smell the flour, the baking soda, the salt, the whatever else you put in apple pie. I don't ever make apple pie, so I don't know all the ingredients that's in there. But the bears will be able to determine exactly what it is. Um, and so that helps them find their food sources wherever they're looking and foraging for food. Because there's so many black bears in the US, and that, like I said, they're very smart and they can smell food, this sometimes means that they come in closer contact with humans. They start recognizing, like at campsites, that people are putting out picnic baskets. Um, maybe they start associating food with a picnic table or sleeping bags or a tent because they know that humans are going to be around. And black bears don't usually go after people, but they go after the food that the people bring to these areas. And so whenever you're out and about and hiking, especially in state parks or in national parks, we just want to be really mindful of how we store our food and how we keep it. Social distancing with bears is not just important during like the COVID <laughs> era, but it's going to be important whenever you're out hiking. And so just making your presence known in different areas, especially if you know that their bears are in that area, uh, just really helps keep everybody safe. Bears, especially black bears, will tend to keep their distance from you. They like being six feet or more away from you at all times, but really you should be way more than six feet away from these black bears. Uh, but they'll hear you and they usually have a lot of different vocalizations that just give you warning if they see you um, and to just back up, just back up slowly, talk to them, let them know that you're a human. It's also to calm your nerves down if you ever see them. Um, but there are safely ways to get away from a bear presence if they are there. But that just means because we're coming in contact with some local wildlife for the black bears, that it just means that we just are having to learn how to work and live safely around them. Uh, especially as urbanization continues to expand, we're going to be coming in closer contact, not just with black bears, but a lot of really local wildlife, which is a really neat opportunity for us to be able to see these animals up close, but we have to do it in a very safe manner. Um, so giving them their space, and like I said, especially with food storage, doing that as well. And this is Kashka. You can see how her face is rounder. She's smelling things that are going around. But they are very smart. And I'll be right back. So we do training with our bears. I'm just picking up a couple of the items that we can do. So a lot of the training that we do, not just with our black bears, but with our animals in general, are husbandry based or medically based. And so the behaviors that we're doing are going to assist in their overall uh, well-being with them. So we do target training with the bears and we can use the target to assist with a lot of different behaviors. So both of our bears <laughs> know the target, so we'll present this to them. Um, this is what I use for the black bears, but you may have seen some of our other videos, a target stick that is smaller for smaller animals. Uh, but it's all protected contact, so we have the mesh and the bear will be on the other side and we'll present the target and they have to touch their nose to the tip of the target. Um, but they also know things um, such as an up behavior where they'll stand up and that way we can get a good, really good look at their abdomen um, and their chest. We're working on chest presentations for the bears and so that way we can potentially do ultrasounds with the bears in the future. That's a work in progress because it's quite a complex behavior. Um, but they also know a lineup behavior and so this way we're able to voluntary uh, give voluntary injections to the bears and this is really beneficial because earlier this year we just had to give them distemper so all that we did <laughs> is we just had the bear line up and we just gave them the distemper and it was easy peasy i bet some dogs when they go to the vet they have a harder time giving distemper than we do but you can see the bear she's standing up she's scratching on the back about this time of year uh, the bears they will start shedding their fur so sometimes if you see them in the springtime or in the the fall 
you'll see like clumps of fur uh, that they're working to get off. It's very similar to like how dogs, they'll blow out their coats and sometimes you'll come home and there's dog fur everywhere. It's very similar with these bears. Uh, so we're cleaning up after them, picking up all of their hair, but you can imagine it's very dense fur. It's to keep them warm over the cooler months. And so a lot of people ask if these bears hibernate. And I just wanted to find hibernation uh, super quickly because hibernation is when the metabolic rate of the animal slows down concurrently with a cooling temperature. And so yes, bears under that definition do hibernate, but that looks differently depending on the bear. For example, in Texas, our winter, especially in San Antonio, is basically non-existent. I know people in New York and in Montana and Utah would laugh at the definition of a San Antonio winter. Our lows don't get that, warm or that cold. So our bears, they have a lighter sense of hibernation. They're definitely their motivation for food and for training wanes. It goes down fairly significantly. We build them a huge hay nest inside of their, their dens that they spend their, a lot of their time in and that's where they're sleeping. But bears further up north, they'll go into a deeper hibernation. Um, they'll spend more time. They will really slow down. And bears in their natural habitat, like in San Antonio or like in Big Bend or Florida or the Louisiana or the Carolinas, their hibernation can be shorter so people could accidentally wake up a bear out of hibernation in the cooler or excuse me in the warmer states but in the colder states it would take a lot to get those bears out of hibernation just because they go into a deeper uh, state and back there kashka's plane it's a hanging thimble toy because it hangs and it looks like a thimble so some of our <laughs> names for these toys are exactly what they are but it's an enrichment device it's a puzzle feeder and so the bears have to figure out how to get their food out of different toys and different options that we give them. So they're pretty smart. They're just sticking their hands right inside the thimble, knocking out all the food. And you notice she's knocking out quite a bit of it, but she's not going after because she sees something in particular that she wants, or maybe she's getting everything out and then going to pick it out at the bottom of what she likes. But this is just an enrichment device that we can give all of our animals to encourage natural behaviors. And so you might have seen this symbol toy in other primate, or excuse me, in other animal areas. And we can clean and disinfect it and put it in different areas and just present it different ways for different animals to utilize. She's gonna knock out all this stuff. <laughs> so we do have a few questions. Oh, perfect. Um, you did answer the hibernation question. Angela would like to know if bears are solitary. That's a great question. So it was asked if bears are solitary. Um, typically bears tend to be solitary. However, black bears are pretty good about being in different areas because the home ranges of bears can overlap. And especially as the spread of urbanization continues um, and then that the natural areas for bears can get a little bit smaller, they have to adapt to living in the same areas with bears. So Kashka and Molly, they've been at the zoo for about 13 years. They came in, they're not biologically related, uh, but they have been together basically their entire life. So they may not be family by, by DNA, by birth, uh, but they are family just because they spend all the time together and they enjoy each other. Um, so that's, that's normal for them. That's an, a normal behavior you may or may not see that in their natural environment. Like I said, if you go to some state parks or some natural parks, you will see bears in the same area um, that get along just fine, and sometimes they don't. It just is dependent on the individual. Kelsey would like to know what their lifespan is. So the bear life expectancy uh, can be into the late 20s and early 30s in zoological settings. Um, in their natural environment, they can also live pretty long. Um, cubs, they, their most cause of death if you find a cub is by something like starvation or maybe an accidental death. Um, but unfortunately, adult bears in their natural habitat, they die from human causes, whether it's, you know, a motor accident or hunting season or something like that with these bears. Um, unfortunately, a lot of their causes are by human related. Um, but in the zoological setting, such as the San Antonio Zoo, obviously they don't have to worry about that. They get all of the food that they need. Uh, we have health staff on, on call. We have th two vets here to take care of anything they need. And we have a bunch of dedicated keepers that keep tabs. And anything these bears want, basically they get. They're definitely <laughs> very well taken care of. How tall are they when they stand up? Kashka, when she stands up, 
she is a little bit taller than me. I'm just shy of 5'10", so she's probably about six feet, I would say, a little bit over when she stands up, if I was to measure on the top of her head. Molly is a little bit shorter. She is probably closer to 5'7", maybe. I could be wrong, but she's definitely shorter. So if she was standing up, I could look down on her. Kashka, I would have to look up. Jack would like to know who's more stubborn with training, Molly or Kashka? <laughs> we just had a question of who's more stubborn with training, Kashka or Molly. And sometimes it depends on the day. And sometimes it depends on the time of year. Kashka and I work really well together. Molly gives me a harder time sometimes, but she does really well when she does want to train. Okay, so Kashka just disappeared from sight for a little bit. So this right now is a pool. We cleaned it this morning, so it is filling up. It's pretty deep, it's pretty big, though it is sunk in the ground. So from our vantage point, it is a bit hard to see. But as you can see, the bear went down to the bottom and she's nowhere to see. So just to get an idea of kind of how deep it is, um, bears like to swim. They'll spend time in the water, or at least black bears like to swim, so they'll spend time in the water. Um, and right now the pool is filling, so it has this little fountain that's in there that she may be playing in there. I can't actually see her, which is fine. <laughs> like I said, the bears, they have this great exhibit, so they can choose where to spend their time, whether it's in their pool or on the climbing structure. The black bears do climb and their claws are pretty well adapted to that. They're not quite like, um, like a sun bear or a spectacle bear that are known for climbing and spend a lot of times in trees, but you'll definitely see black bears in trees. Veronica is asking if their fur is soft or coarse. Their fur texture, I wouldn't say it's coarse, but I also wouldn't necessarily say it's super soft. It's, um, It's somewhere in the middle. It's more soft than coarse. I cannot think of a dog species that of like the fur, but it's really thick. And so remember, especially in the cooler months when these guys go in hibernation, they'll get the thicker fur. Um, and so their undercoat is going to be more softer. Their outermost layer is to help keep like the heat in, to keep them insulated or to keep them cool in the summertime. But it also, when they're in the water, it helps repel water a little bit. Um, it's not quite, like some other species, but you'll notice if Kashka gets out of the water and you can see the water running off of her. Um, but it's definitely, I would say it leans more toward the softer side. What kind of fish do these bears like to eat? These bears like to eat mackerel and herring and salmon. So they get fish three times a week on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And they get, let's see, it's one kilogram. So just about two and a half pounds if I'm doing my conversion correctly. And they'll get that three times a week and we'll feed it to them. Occasionally our nutrition center will surprise us and send down a novel fish species for them to try and eat, which is really exciting for the bears and it's exciting for us as keepers to be able to do that. And that's just another form of enrichment to give them a novel food um, or present it in a different way. Can you tell us again if these two are siblings? So Molly and Kashka are not siblings by birth, they're not related to each other, uh, but they have been living together here at the San Antonio Zoo for close to 13 years. And so they grew up together. They're like adoptive sisters. Um, do you want to talk about some of the other cool behaviors you've trained with them? Sure. <laughs> so also uh, we do a neat behavior of painting. So these are two bear paintings that we have. Um, both were done by Kashka. And what we do is we present a clipboard and we put some paint on there. And then we ask her to touch and that's how she knows to touch the clipboard. And then we present the canvas and then she touches the canvas and reward her for that. And you can see, especially in the yellow one, the size of her paw, she put it down fairly nicely and then she swiped it a little bit. And in the red one, it has some good claw marks. And so you're able to see what exactly it can look like. But this is just a fun behavior that we do with them. Um, but we do also sell, not these particular paintings because these are keeper paintings, but we do sell animal paintings here at the zoo um, and all the proceeds go to animal conservation. So it's a neat way to show um, like what bear paw prints can look like or what bear claw marks can look like. 
Molly, Kashka's flipping around in the pool. Um, but like, or we do like flamingo paintings or like snake paintings. And so you can see the scales or the feathers on the birds or the feet on the birds. And so it's just a neat way to see a different side of the animals. And it's just another training behavior for them. But it's also beneficial. So the same touch behavior we try to use um, in the cooler months. Kashka, her paws got a little drier, just like our skin gets drier in the, in the cooler months. So we were putting lotion on her. And so we did like the touch behavior for that too. Um, so she would touch the clipboard and get some paint on her paws. It didn't work exactly what we were trying to because they also have fur on their paws. And so the lotion was getting stuck on the fur. But all Do the different- Do you ever sorry. go in and interact with these bears? So we never go in and interact with these bears. So the black bears, the spectacle bear, all of these guys <laughs> are considered dangerous carnivores. And we never share space with them. So whenever we are coming in to clean the exhibit, they go inside of their den areas. We bring them inside and we feed them some produce that's in there. And we maybe sometimes give them enrichment in there, but it's just a positive space for them to be and spend their time. And that way we can come onto exhibit, we can clean, we can put enrichment out, we can put food out, um, whatever we need to be done. And then when we are ready to clean the inside of the dens, we just let the bears go outside. So we never share the same space with them. If we're doing any sort of training with them, it's all through protected contact, um, which means that there is mesh, like a mesh barrier in between us. There's a great video that was posted earlier this week with lion training outside on exhibit on the training wall. And that's something very similar to what we do with the bears. So we always have a barrier between us and the bears and we work very safely um, in order to do that. What's their favorite enrichment activity? Oh, we just got asked what their favorite enrichment activity is. And I would say anything that involves food, uh, especially in the warmer months, they are more food motivated. Um, so we will put food out. They also like different kinds of scents. So if we put um, maybe a toy out and we put some perfume on it, or we put like a blueberry scent on it, or even something like mink gland scent on it or deer urine, um, the bears really seem to enjoy it and they'll rub on it and they'll lay in it. Uh, these two black bears, we've had more success seeing that type of behavior. Um, if it smells like perfume that your grandmother would wear. These guys really enjoy that part. Um, so like I said, but bears are very smart. So we are constantly thinking of different ways to present enrichment to them, thinking of new different enrichment ideas for them. They do receive different enrichment items daily. And some of that you'll be able to see on exhibit like these toys, it's very physical, but things like a scent, or maybe we played them I don't know, like coyotes howling on YouTube or something. You're not going to necessarily see that type of enrichment, but they receive it every single day. Can you tell us how old they are? We just got asked how old these bears are. They, we don't know exactly how old they are um, because they were not born in a zoological setting. Uh, but when they were cubs, they were found and we took them in. And so that way they would have a chance to thrive. Uh, so they've been here about 13 years. So when they were in, they were really young, probably a year or less. Uh, so we estimate them to be about 13 years old. Can you tell us if black bears are endangered and if we plan on doing any breeding? We're not doing any breeding here. Um, and obviously we can't, we have two girls. Um, black bears aren't endangered. They are the most prolific bear species in North America. So they're thriving, they're doing well. Um, that's not to say that they don't have threats in their natural environment. Um, different human causes of that are definitely um, an issue. Just as humans and bears are coming in close contact with each other, they're both large, um, like apex predators in a way. Um, so we're going to be fighting over the same sorts of resources. So it really, we just have to learn how to live together. Human wildlife interactions are just really important and really beneficial. That's a whole other chat that I could talk about forever. Um, <laughs> but Bears are really neat because they provide a lot of really neat ecological services. Um, they're seed dispersers. They help maintain um, prey, animal populations. And so they're really beneficial. And so knowing those exact numbers in their natural environment helps give us a good idea of how healthy various ecosystems are. Um, and with North American black bears, it's really important because they're found all over the place. And so we can really see how different parts of the US 
how their different ecosystems are, are healthy or not, just by the presence of bears. A few people would like to know if you ever offer honey or music as enrichment. A couple of people were asking if we offer honey or music to the bears for enrichment. The answer is definitely yes. Uh, the honey we don't give every single day. Obviously it is like a sweet, it's kind of like their candy. So we use it sporadically. Um, they really enjoy that. One of the top things that these bears love though is avocado. So they receive monthly meds, Confortis and Ivermectin. It's very similar to what your dogs and your cats receive to protect against um, heartworm and fleas and ticks and, and all that sorts of stuff. Um, and bears, like I said, with their sense of smell, they're able to smell the medication. Um, and so sometimes they don't want to take it. And so we just put it in an avocado and they take it wonderfully. Um, and this is really beneficial. So if we, like I said, those monthly meds that we give them, um, just preventative health care. Um, but if we ever had to give them medication for anything else, then we just mix it in avocado and it's easy peasy. So that's something that they really enjoy. Um, and we do use honey occasionally too. That one's really nice because you can spread it all over the place and hide it for them. Uh, we'll give them music. Music is more of a something that we do in the morning while we'll clean. Sometimes we'll leave up our phone in the holding area uh, with some music going for them. How big can black bears get? The size of black bears can vary depending on their location because some bears that are found in the more southern states of the U.S., they're going to be a little bit smaller. So they can be uh, maybe 150 to 200 pounds, but bears up north, you can see them get pretty big. You can see them get around 400 pounds. Females tend to be a little bit larger than the, the females, um, but they just have a wide range. It, that's something that's really neat about black bears. Like I said, their coloration isn't always black. It can be five different, it can be like a cinnamon, a white color. <laughs> you may be able to see like okay so in reference if i was standing next to that um fire hose level that's about my height and i'm about 510 just to give an idea of how large she is or how tall not large excuse me how tall she is uh, but bears will do that they'll sit, they'll rub on each other and on, on different objects and that helps loosen up any fur um, especially in these that we're getting into our warmer months so they're shedding their winter coat and they're trying to release it um, but it also leaves their scent and that's a way that they can communicate to each other and they're excellent climbers Kashka is demonstrating that perfectly they'll utilize different areas of the climbing structure they don't always spend a ton of time in the climbing structures some like Kurt or spectacle bear if you come and visit him sometimes he'll always be on there pretty consistently but the black bears they rotate through their exhibit and use different aspects of it, which is really neat to see because they can exhibit a lot of really natural behaviors, such as climbing or swimming or taking a nap in the shade or scratching their back on the different posts. All of that is natural bear behavior and that's something that we really strive to encourage them to do. And here. Can you tell us a little bit about their individual personalities and if they have any unique or goofy habits? <laughs> okay, so I just got asked to describe their individual personalities. Uh, I'll start with Kashka because she's the one I believe that's on the camera right now. Um, Kashka can be stubborn, but they're very smart animals. And so um, she's very smart. She has a lot of different training behaviors and it's just been a lot of fun to be able to work with her and to grow personally as my skills with it as a trainer, um, but also to see her grow and develop too. She's pretty curious. I mean, she'll go to different enrichment items like we saw here. She'll investigate the different areas. Um, and she definitely has her own mind. So when the cooler months start coming and the nights are like 50, 60 outside, and we may think that's a little bit chilly, but Kashka loves sleeping outside when it hits those temperatures. And sometimes she would rather stay outside uh, than ship inside in the morning for us. And so if she doesn't want to do something, we can't make her do it. She's choosing to do it. Um, and she really likes avocado. She is the avocado queen. Molly enjoys it, but Kashka, you want her to do anything? It's an avocado. <laughs> very smart, very inquisitive. Molly is also pretty smart. Um, believe it or not, sometimes she can be the more dominant bear. There's not necessarily like one dominant one. They, they're pretty much equal, um, but sometimes she will be the one that will defend her food area or where she wants to be from Kashka. Given her size, you may not think that, but it, it definitely is. Um, so 
she's small but mighty <laughs> kind of the thing she again is also pretty smart um she's curious and inquisitive but i don't know if i would say quite as much as as kashka is Here at the zoo, we have two different bear species. We have the North American black bear, which is what we're talking about today. And then next door, we have Kurt. He is a spectacled bear. Um, last week, we did a Facebook Live with Kurt, uh, where we talked about a bunch of really cool facts about spectacled bears. So I highly encourage you guys to check that out as well. Um, and then today, we're talking about our black bears. Do you know if bears can see in color? We just got asked if bears can see in color. And I believe the answer is yes but if somebody knows that I'm wrong you can t totally call me out in the comments but I believe that the answer is yes and the reason I want to say that it is is because bears can identify food not only by the smell but by sight and they can determine what the different food is and I know you can do that in different grayscales but determining like the, the advancement of bears I want to say that they can see in color now I don't know the color spectrum is exactly the same as in humans that I don't know um, but if I had to bet, these guys can see in color. And when I'm talking about how smart these bears are in general, they can identify uh, like simple concepts. Um, and so they can have like simple abstract thoughts, like that's kind of what the bears have. For example, like with our target stick that I showed you earlier, uh, they learned that they can touch it with their, with their nose but then they also can know to touch it with other body parts. And so this is great for different body presentations if we wanted to be able to get a look at their hips or their paws or their chest. Um, and so it's a great learning tool to be able to use that because they recognize that when they see the target stick, that that's something that we want to be able to do a body presentation with. And the So we just got asked if we bring the bears in at night or if they have access in and out. For the most part, overnight, the animals are going to have access to their holding areas so they can choose um, if they want to spend the night in their dens, if they want to spend their night out on their habitat, they get to have the option of where to spend their time. Um, the only exception is the one day a year that San Antonio has like really inclement weather and really bad weather. Uh, so sometimes we'll bring them in overnight. Um, for us, that would probably mean when it's supposed to rain overnight and then freeze just because these guys have a moat. We don't want anything to happen. So we'll bring them in for that. Um, but counting, like, unless we don't have any extreme weather conditions, they'll have access inside and out so they can choose where to spend their time. And we also do this in case of inclement weather. We'll give them access to their holding spaces so they can choose where to, to spend their time. Sure thing. So I just got asked to explain hibernation again. And hibernation for the purpose of this talk is just the slowing of the metabolic rate concurrent with the cooling temperatures. And so if you're looking at that, um, yes, bears do hibernate because they do have a slower metabolism um, when the months are cooler. That said, not all black bears hibernate the same. So here in San Antonio, uh, our winter, isn't really a winter it does get down like into the 30s or into the 40s but not very consistently so their hibernation just means that they're a little bit slower moving they like to sleep a, a lot they're not as motivated to train and work they just don't really want to eat as much and that's totally okay we give them a huge den bed that they can spend their time and sleep in um, but they still go on exhibit they'll still interact with different you know with different enrichment items it just looks a little bit different they're going to be sleeping a little bit more However, if you go up north, um, the black bears that are up there may be in a deeper sleep. Um, maybe they go into an indoor area, like especially in a zoological setting um, where you can see their indoor dens of where they're spending their time um, and they may not be as riled up. And that also translates to bears in their natural habitat because some bears that you see in the southern states, they go into a lighter hibernation. Um, and this is also because food is available for more times of the year. It might be like seven or eight months compared to like three or four months of food. And so they only have to necessarily go into hibernation for that short amount of time when there isn't as much food readily available in those cooler months. So their hibernation will usually be a lighter thing. If you stumble upon a, a hibernating bear, it's easier to rouse them up 
accidentally. Um, but if you see a bear up north that's in hibernation, you may not be able to necessarily get them up unless you're actively trying, which I do not recommend, but it's just, uh, it's just a deeper hibernation in the colder climates. Um, so I just want to thank everybody that has donated just by watching this video or throughout the time that we've been doing anything like this. Um, thank you so much. It really means a lot. Um, there's plenty of ways. Um, if you feel so inclined to support us financially, um, you can go to our website, www.sazoo.org <laughs> and donate to our emergency relief fund. That just helps us provide all this splendid care that we give to all of our animals, not just our North American black bears. Um, but thank you everyone that's donated. Thank you for doing that. Um, and also just keep supporting our zoo. Just keep on checking in with our Facebook live videos. Um, there's a bunch of really neat um, inside looks of what we do every day here as animal care specialists, um, whether it's working with bears or birds or you know the nutrition center or the veterinary center, um, just all the different aspects of what goes into running and maintaining a zoo. Um, from the animal care side of things, which is really interesting. And so feel free to like, like our videos, share them, get the word out. Um, and again, if you feel so inclined, please donate to our emergency fund. So thank you for joining me again. My name is Jamie and I love talking about these bears and I'm so glad to be able to share that with you. Um, have a great day.